it's Camille from Camille I Am. YouTube and blogging is so much fun and I bet some of you are holding back creating a channel or a blog because you don't think that you have a cutesy enough house or whatever it may be. So today I'm going to show you a bunch of DIY backgrounds that you can use in your YouTube videos or your blog posts so that you can have a controlled space to do your DIYs and your recipes in and it won't even matter what the rest of your house looks like. I've seen these same types of backgrounds in so many people's videos, like Soella's and also their Instagrams. So if you wanna get that YouTuber aesthetic that everybody wants without spending all the money that they do, keep watching, I'm gonna show you how to do that today. But before we start the video, make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below letting me know who your favorite YouTuber is. And let's get onto the video. The first background I'm going to show you, I'm not going to do a detailed DIY on it or anything because I made it forever ago and I've been using it for my blog post for a really long time, but it is super easy to make. And it's just this white brick wall. So all you need to do is go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you can buy one of their fake brick walls that they have and it's kind of made out of this cardboard material. And then all I did was I just painted it white and this is just a really super easy background that you can use for YouTube or your blog post. For our next background, we're going to make a penny tile background. So the things you will need to make this are a piece of plywood, some penny tile, which you can get at any hardware store like Home Depot or Lowe's, some grout, something to mix it in, a trowel, some water, and a sponge. First, we're going to start mixing our grout. So I took a fourth a cup of grout and a fourth a cup of water, and then I added a couple more scoops of grout just to get the consistency that I want. And make sure that you are making enough grout so that it can cover the whole board that you are using. And the consistency that you want is a thick peanut butter consistency. Then you're gonna start laying out your penny tile onto your board. And penny tile is kind of like a puzzle, so it does match up, but you kind of have to try it in different ways to make sure that it matches perfectly. Set it aside, then start scooping out your grout onto your board. And I just put a little dollop at a time and then smooth it out on that section just because it does dry kind of quickly, so you wanna just do one portion at a time. Then you're going to set your penny tile over the grout that you just smoothed out and push it down and make it as smooth as you can. Then you're going to do the remaining portions of your board, covering your whole board with grout and then putting the penny tile on top. And then you're going to have to push it down really nicely and so that it sticks and the grout will start coming up through the cracks of the penny tile. Then just make any adjustments that you need just to make sure that the penny tile is all smooth and looks like a repeating pattern. Then to make sure that all of your cracks are filled in the rest of the way, just put some grout on the top of your penny tile and start smoothing it out over the top. And I kind of just used my hand and the shovel to make sure that all the cracks were filled in really evenly. Next, you're going to wipe off all the excess grout, and I first used my hand, and then I took the sponge and wrung out the water and cleaned up all the grout off of the penny tiles, making sure that they were all super shiny. And then this is just going to need to dry for about eight hours before you can use it. And here's what it will look like when it's all set up for a photo, and I'm also using the white brick background in this photo so that I can take some straight on shots and I can also take some overhead shots if I just want to use the penny tile. For the next background, we will be making this whitewashed wood background. So the things you will need to make this are a package of wood panels, which you can find at any hardware store, some wood glue, some paint brushes, some stain of any color of your choice, some Vaseline, and some white paint. Lay out all of your wood panels, how you're going to want them, and these are really nice because they already have all the grooves in them so that they fit together really nicely. So what you're going to do is just fill in all of the grooves with the glue and then push them all together and make sure that they are tight so that they will dry in the position that you want them to. And just keep doing that for all of the panels until your whole board is stuck together. After 
had about an hour to dry, we're going to start sanding off the excess glue that was left over. Then you're going to start staining your board, so you're going to brush your whole board with the stain until it's all covered. Then once your whole board is covered, you're going to wipe it down with a paper towel to clean off the excess and let it dry. Once your stain has dried for a little bit, we're going to add some Vaseline to the board in some random places like the cracks and crevices and this just makes a really cool crackled effect to make your whitewashed board look a little bit more old and antique. Then you're just going to brush over the Vaseline with some white paint covering the whole board. Then once your board has been drying for a couple hours, you can just take a paper towel and brush over it and the spots where the Vaseline are are going to start coming up and it's going to make a really cool effect. I really love how this background turned out and it's actually inspired by Zoella. I've seen her use this same type of background in some of her Instagram posts and I tried to recreate one of her posts in this photo and I think that they turned out really similar. And this last background is super easy. All I did was take a foam poster board that I got from Walmart for literally a dollar and then I took a marble cutting board that I already had and I just set up the photo really cute. And as you can see, it looks so professional despite the fact that it was super cheap and easy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed making these DIY backgrounds. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below letting me know if you're going to try any of these out. And also make sure to check out my blog and my social media. It will be linked in the description below. And I will see you next time. Bye!